What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 wrestlers who actually elevated a WWE title. Now, there are times where a wrestler's title reign actually enhances the title itself. It bring uh the wrestler's able to bring a little bit more prestige to the title with good matches, good feuds for the title, and you know, it, it overall enhances it so that way it's supposed to be when the next person ends up obtaining the title they can you know it already has that that great previous title reign already on it so you know you could kind of build off of that now in recent years uh for example and I'm, I'm sure maybe they'll have this person on the list uh the intercontinental championship hasn't really been featured prominently um it hadn't even really been uh i guess you can say uh set up as the the workhorse title for quite some time but when they decided to put the title on gunther it his matches the um the feuds he's had for the title and and the prestige he's brought back to it and the way he carries himself with the championship he has definitely made it uh you know made it seem like it's that important again and it's the workhorse title as it should be and it's, it's good to see gunther doing that so maybe he will be on this list of someone elevating uh the intercontinental championship because he deserves to be on there because right now um him having that championship he just makes you know the intercontinental championship seem that important as it should so we're gonna get, get right into it appreciate all love and support Let's get right into this one, man. When a wrestler wins a title in WWE, it should be their aim to have the most memorable reign possible. This reign should be filled with great matches and compelling storylines, but it's not uncommon for a wrestler to have such a strong reign as champion that they ultimately enhance the prestige of that title. Join Speaking us now as WrestleMania Gunther. looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who actually elevated a title. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, RK Bro, the Raw Tag Team Titles. Hmm. When Randy Orton and Matt Riddle formed an unlikely partnership on WWE TV, fans were curious to see how the two would work together. Outside of the partnership with Edge's rated RKO, that was Orton a good had time. never been that was known a good time as a right tag there. team wrestler. So this was something brand new for the WWE great, and to say it was refreshing would be an understatement. Orton and Riddle had tremendous chemistry in the ring, and seeing their bond grow over time was a complete joy to watch. When they eventually won the Raw Tag Team titles, all eyes were now on the titles, predominantly- I'm not even gonna lie to you. I can I can somewhat agree with that. When they actually won it, they were like the hottest thing on Raw, like weekly. Like they were the hottest thing on Monday Night Raw. That's before the Usos ended up getting uh, the Raw titles as well. But they were the hottest thing on Raw, without a doubt. And they definitely did help those, uh, those uh, quarter belts, <laughs> for sure, elevate them. Just a bit. <laughs> because Orton was now in the tag division, but also because RK Bros matches as a duo were just that good. Matches featuring the talented duo would often main event episodes of Raw, and there was for once yeah. a ton of focus and spotlight on the tag division on the Raw brand. Which was the crazy era of RK see. Bro, which lasted from 2021 to 2022, was a great time for fans of tag team wrestling, and hopefully one day they'll look to revisit it. Number Maybe nine, day, Tommaso man. Ciampa, the NXT title. Ooh. Tommaso Ciampa delivered some of the finest work of his entire career during his NXT title reign. Ciampa captured the title on NXT TV in 2018, and his entire character arc would now be shaped by winning the title. Ciampa became obsessed with the fact that he was champion. In every promo, he would state that the NXT title is the most important title in wrestling, and he was actively calling it a world title, which just naturally made the NXT title appear even more prestigious. The NXT title was obsessed with it, which works, works for his character. I wish they would do something more with him on the main roster. He needs something right now because right now he's he's turned damn damn near into a J.A.G. man. It was never in a bad place before Ciampa attained it. It was just that Ciampa took the status of the title to the next level. Ciampa's in-ring work during this reign was also acclaimed by many, as his matches with the likes of Johnny Gargano and Aleister Black were all outstanding and wouldn't have been out of place on the main roster pay-per-view event. Number eight. I would go with uh, Adam Cole. Me personally, I would go with Adam Cole and just that undisputed era 
that that whole title reign. I would go with Adam Cole as someone that really elevated the NXT title. That's just my personal opinion on it. Neville Cruiserweight title. Upon reintroducing the Cruiserweight title in 2016, WWE had a tough time in getting fans to care about the new title. Unfortunately. It'd be showcased on Raw and 205 Live, but there was a lack of star power to generate any genuine interest. Mm -hmm. This would all change in late 2016 when one of the most talented stars on the roster, Neville, would turn heel and Which enter the great. Cruiserweight division. Neville's entire gimmick would change into a menacing, legitimate pro wrestler who was going to annihilate anyone in the ring. Which I, Neville would which quickly we, capture we could the appreciate. Cruiserweight title, and thanks to the way he conducted himself both inside and outside of the ring, the title finally had a champion that fans actually cared about. Neville would become the king of the Cruiserweights, and this reign and gimmick was so good that fans were pushing for Neville to be pulled into the main event scene on the main roster. Sadly, WWE had other yeah. ideas, and Neville eventually dropped the title to Enzo Amore, which would completely derail any goodwill they had developed with the fans when it came yeah. to their cruiserweight division. They killed the division Number seven, when they did that. Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio. I get it. They were trying to put eyes on it, you know, get more people to watch it, but at the same time, it was just like, damn, bro. <laughs> He's technically doesn't come off as a cruiserweight, so I don't know. Yeah. Little title. In 2009, WWE, for the first time in what seemed like a decade, gave the Intercontinental Championship a prominent feud. Two mm -hmm. WWE icons in Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio would feud over the title. This was a standout feud of 2009, and the matches could have easily headlined pay-per-views. The Intercontinental title was previously known as the Workhorse title, and yeah. giving two talents such as Jericho and Mysterio the title of feud over did wonders for how the title was being perceived by the fanbase. The summer of 2009 was a golden period for the title, and every match the two had seemed to get better and better. Even JR, who was always known to be honest and open when it comes to his opinions on pro wrestling, would label the feud and matches as memorable art, which summed up the common consensus at the time. This Number 6, true. Sasha Banks and Bayley, the women's tag titles. The pandemic era- yeah, I don't think there's anyone else that uh, <laughs> elevates those titles other than them two, for sure. Uh, it could have been Ronda and Shayna, but Ronda's about to leave and they ain't really do too much with them there. So, obviously, by default, it would be Sasha and uh, Bailey. Era in WWE was a difficult time period as WWE talent were forced to perform in front of zero fans. While it's not the most joyous time period in WWE history, this era did showcase some of the talent in the company in their best manner possible. Banks and Bailey's work during this era was truly unbelievable. The two had undeniable chemistry as a tank team, and their matches with the likes of Asuka and Kairi Sane were marvelous. The two would hold the women's tag titles during this era, and this was perhaps the only time since the inception of the titles mm -hmm. that they had felt prestigious. Banks and Bailey carried themselves like world champions and often referenced how important being tag champions was to their respective careers. It was fine work from Banks and Bailey, and fans will look back on this era in years to come and realize that they were two of the MVPs of the infamous era. For Number sure. five, Mark Henry, the world title. Oh, the world title, wow. aka Big Goldie, has had a bizarre history in WWE. You know what? Mark Henry, when he did win it, he did come off as like this unstoppable force. And how you're going to obtain the world heavyweight championship from him. I'm, he did give that type of vibe. Um, I could say, I mean, that's a fair point if you want to say he, he definitely did enhance it for sure. He, he gave off a menacing vibe. Like, yeah, Mark Henry looked like he would destroy you <laughs> and you don't stand a chance to get that title from him. WWE, whilst champions such as Triple H, Edge and CM Punk all had incredible reigns, there were also a fair share of lackluster champions. Champions such as Jack Swagger of and course. Alberto Del Rio made yeah. the title look inferior. And over time, the world title was seen as a step below the WWE Championship. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, in 2011, one individual emerged and had a unique yet compelling reign as world champion. Following turning heel, Mark Henry introduced fans to the Hall of Pain. Yeah, the Hall of Henry Pain. became meaner, grittier, and he was taking no prisoners. Uh, Henry had yeah. put it all together with this character. His in-ring work was better than ever, but his promo and character work was where he truly shined. Henry won the world title at the Night of Champions pay-per-view, and although his reign only lasted a few months, the world title was in a fantastic place with Henry holding the gold. The world champion was now credible, legitimate, and virtually unstoppable. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. He looked like a world champion, and he, the Hall of Pain, he was putting people in <laughs> first ballots. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he was someone that was legitimately 
terrifying as a world champion. How are you going to stop this guy? That's the question you would ask when you saw him. It was exactly what the WWE needed at the time. Number four, Gunther, Intercontinental title. Here we go. On debuting I on the main it. roster in 2022, <laughs> fans were skeptical in relation to how Gunther would be used. Was he was so one skeptical. of the best workers in the entire world, but would WWE realize this? Would they use Gunther in the right manner? While they would quickly win the Intercontinental Championship and his ongoing reign has been even better than fans expected. For sure. Gunther has been presented as one of the most unstoppable wrestlers in the modern era and yep. is yet to be pinned or submitted on the main <laughs> roster. Crazy. As reigning champion, Gunther has had banger after banger and he's had classic matches with the likes of Sheamus and Ricochet and the title hasn't been used in such a prosperous position in a very long time. Facts. Number 3. AJ Styles WWE mm. Title Jinder Mahal's WWE title reign in 2017 Ooh. was a disaster. Mahal simply was a main event material and his reign put a huge question mark surrounding the credibility of WWE's top prize. They would rectify this by putting the title on AJ Styles. For sure. This was a welcome move as Styles was one of the best in the company and he was super popular as a babyface. He would have feuds with the likes of Samoa Joe mm -hmm. and Shinsuke Nakamura and this allowed the title to be in a positive light once again. Some fans may argue that putting the title on anyone following Mahal's reign would have worked, but the reality is that it needed someone that was an established main event level attraction, and AJ was the perfect guy for the oh, job. For sure, without Number a doubt. Number two, the Miz Intercontinental Title. When the Miz now, I'm not gonna lie, him as the IC champ for a while back during I believe this is like the SmackDown Live uh, days. It's pretty good. I did a video of some of the best ice, uh, well, some of the best champions, you know, or well, you know, uh, of all all time in WWE. Um, and some of you guys, you know, I asked you guys in the comments, who do you feel like is some of the best champions for each, uh, respective belt? And some of you guys even put the Miz up there. The Miz and Dolph Ziggler deserve to be in that that conversation as some of the best IC champions. And I'm not gonna lie, the Miz during this time. This is when the IC title actually seemed like it meant something, and then it kind of just nosedived. And now it's back even higher, in my opinion. So, I'm okay with this. He won the Intercontinental title on Raw after WrestleMania 32. Fan disappointment related to Zack Ryder's brief run with the title quickly faded, as Miz took the title to new heights. Over the next few months, Miz would do everything he could both on and off screen to make mm -hmm. the title mean something. Following the 2016 draft, The Miz would have a truly outstanding feud with Dolph Ziggler, yep. which successfully repositioned the title mm. as a valuable and desirable championship. This was a great feud. Miz, despite being a heel, would consistently cut thrilling promos related to the importance of the title. Mm -hmm. According to The Miz himself, during an interview on Booker T's podcast, he wanted to rebuild the prestige of the title with his acclaimed 2016 reign. And number one, John Cena, the US title. WrestleMania 31 saw John Cena capture the US title by defeating Rusev. I figured. What followed was arguably the finest 147 days of Cena's iconic career. For sure. Cena would introduce fans to the US title open challenge, and every week Cena would face someone on the roster for the US title. Not gonna lie, this was classic matches with the likes of Sami Zayn and Cesaro. This was actually Cena really Cena was good. delivering a level of in-ring work that fans had never seen from yeah. him before. And this was all whilst holding a title that hadn't been given this level of spotlight since Eddie Guerrero held a title in 2000. And three, Cena was everything true. the US title needed at the time. And let's face it, the title will unlikely ever be as prestigious or celebrated as it was during Cena's 147 day reign back in 2015. Yeah, bro, he was. But there you have it, folks 10 WWE wrestlers who. He. When he won that title, even though I would have preferred Rusev to go over, but I, I, I understand. In the long run, he made that title seem like the most important championship in the entire company bro he did he made that title seem that important and us fans we enjoy great matches because of it i am okay with that being number one i don't think there's anybody in the recent years in quite some time especially for the united states championship has made that belt look that prestigious and that important he elevated it Right now, where it's at, it's not really looking too good, to be honest with you. They need to get it off of LA Knight. I mean, not LA Knight. They need to put it on LA Knight, but they need to get off of um, Austin Theory because it's just not working. 
it's, it's not working right now so i don't know it's gonna be very interesting to see what they do with the united states championship going forward but there's what there's no questioning about it john cena elevating the united states championship to the the place it was when he had it, it was fantastic some of the great some great weekly television so comment down below let me know some other wrestlers you feel like elevated a wwe title i know there's a few that weren't on this list uh let me know down below who do you feel like you know elevated all the respective titles that we have right now in wwe but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still here on the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace